welcome back. So we're going to continue working on soldering the resistors into this board. And again, I'm not expecting that everyone is going to enjoy watching what may seem to be boring to some people of me going through and soldering the components one by one on this board. But I had several people in the comments ask me to, to please do a video with just everything. Like, don't skip steps. And so, you're welcome to skip ahead to videos down the road, which, you know, it'll show all this stuff populated. But I'm going to keep going here. So I'm looking for... I've got some 330K resistors to put up here near the front end of the board. And these little 1 watt guys are just fine for this location and again when I get this done or at some point we're going to do a, a dive into the schematic to understand what all these components are doing but for now we're just populating the board and again even these even these smaller resistors, I like to stand them up off the board just a little bit. There's no, there's no point in having them just laying up against the board. Because even these one, even if there's only a half a watt of power going through them, there's still heat being generated. And there's no point in having that heat cooking the board. Now here's one thing that I want to look at because I'm going to have this electrolytic, electrolytic capacitor sitting like right here. And no, that, that resistor is not really close to it. That's not a concern. If it was, we might kind of move it over like that, but I don't think that's, I don't think that's going to be a concern with this location. And so... I'm going to put these 330Ks in. And the resistors probably take are probably going to take the longest of doing this. Once we get all these resistors on the board, the capacitors are going to go pretty quick. I'm going to go ahead and solder these two up. Again, like other things in life with soldering, the soldering tip, cleanliness is next to godliness. You want that, you want to keep that tip clean. Uh -huh. And See, this is, I was sitting here talking to you guys. I'm not thinking about, I need to be measuring these resistors just to make damn sure that what I'm putting in here is what's supposed to be in here. So, let's move this down so you can. These were supposed to be 330K. Yep, 330. Yep. And I'm going to check these other two. Three thirty. Never take for granted that what's on the resistor or what's in the bag is what you're putting in your project. Because it easily, I run, have, hasn't been often, but I've run across a couple of resistors that were just way off and when they're manufacturing these things I'd be, I, mean, I don't know but I'd be shocked if they were testing every one they make but again I don't know how they make them that may be they may make them all and then sort them by their values later now 
never been to a resistor manufacturing plant, so. Okay. And I hope I've got all the parts here. I know that I've done a couple of projects since I've bought all these parts. And sometimes I'll go in a bag and wrap, rob some parts when I'm in the middle of a build and then come back later and go, oh damn, I used up that 2.2K resistor in this other project and I forgot to order more. So I'm really trying to get in the habit when I'm ordering parts to order more than I need just so that I do have some extras around for when I'm I got a little box over here full of resistors so when I'm working on a project if I do need some I can usually go dig one up Especially, especially parts like resistors that are only 20 cents or something like that. A lot of times if you buy 10 of them, you can get 10 of them for about the price that 5 or 6 of them cost. It's only a dollar or something. It's not really worth, you know, if you're buying specialty $15 capacitors or something, you may not want to buy a ton of them. Okay, there's that. We got these uh, 330Ks installed, and I'm, I'm really trying to make sure that I stay on camera too, but I'm, I am trying to focus on what I'm doing at the same time, so you just have to excuse me if every once in a while the board slips off the edge of the camera while I'm, while I'm soldering. Okay, these should be 2.2K that go right here and I believe yeah there's another 2.2k across here so let's test all these yep that one's good that one's good I hate to say it, guys, this might be a couple of hours of video. But again, this is a hobby. And this is why when people say, oh, will you build me an amplifier? What would it cost? Well, I'm not hurrying and rushing through like a, product, a production shop would building things. And I do enjoy just the the act of building them. And so I'm not sure I really would ever want to get into the point of where I'm hustling to try to see how quick I can build multiples of something to sell to people. Like I've said in the past videos too, you know, possibly at some point I could... I could see maybe putting together some kind of kits, you know, that I'm let y'all build it with TLC like I am. But I wouldn't, I don't think I'd ever want to get to the point where I was just like hustling through and trying to build them like really fast so I could be make, make it worth my while monetarily to be doing them for somebody else. And like this little resistor here, it's you could use one of these little short ones like I've got and use these first two holes. But it's also got a hole over here in case you get the longer type resistors, which are fine too. I would populate this thing. I always use 
I never go below a one watt resistor because now they make one watt resistors that are the size of almost as small as what quarter watt resistors used to be. And I think in audio signals, you don't want a really small rated resistor with the audio signal going through it. It's another one of those things that I haven't really sat down and tested, but I read people saying that, you know, that that's where you end up with hiss is using resistors that are, you know, barely capable of flowing the power that they're rated at. And they're basically straining. So, let's see, let's solder these guys all in place. Get my tip clean. A little fresh solder float under the tip. And if you don't see the resistor jumping around as it's cooling off, then you don't really need to go back and reflow the other joint. But if you do see it like rocking around while it's cooling off, once you once you nail down the other side, it's a good idea to come back and reflow the first side just to make sure that the solder isn't crystallizing as it's cooling off. Okay. Okay. Let's give that a little. Here we go. And, like the, and that's why I was telling you in the tools, when you're buying these flush snippers, go ahead and spend a little money and get some decent ones. You're going to be snipping off a ton of wires. Even if you're doing point-to-point -point stuff. And it's just nice to have it where it cuts off really nice and clean and flush. Okay. All of these are now, looks like they're standing up nice and proud. Great. Okay. Now, the next one we're going to solder in, and these are the ones I told you need to be really high quality precision resistors because these are the ones that match the impedance of the preamp to your phono cartridge. And in most cases, it's 47K. But you need to read your the manual that comes with your photo, photo cartridge and make sure that's what it is. And that one is exactly 47K. And I kind of screwed up. I didn't order extras of these. I'm just kind of assuming these being 1% resistors that they're probably going to be. And they are. They're both spot on 47K. I promised you those carbon film or carbon comp resistors that come in that kit. <laughs> they are not exactly 47K. And that really does make a difference. So, and these really don't have, these really don't have any power going, much going through them. I think these could be, and I'm still going to have them stand up just a little bit. But they don't need to stand up near as high as like those power resistors do.
Again, I'm not sure my other preamp that I built that these resistors were exactly 47K either, so that possibly could make a difference in the way the two preamps sound, just having that just absolutely dialed in. Like I said, given how precision these are, we want to make sure these have a nice, solid connection here so we don't have even like a little bit of resistance where the lead's going onto the board. Because that could affect the input impedance, which we want to be exactly 47K. So that's those in place. And we're starting to kind of zip along here. Okay, what are our next resistors as we, <laughs> as we follow down the board? Okay, that's capacitor, that's capacitor. That's capacitor, that's capacitor, that's capacitor, that's capacitor. Okay, we've got two mags. That's another capacitor. And then we've got, that's another capacitor, and another two mag, and another two mag, and then a 3.3 mag on each side of that. So, here's our... 3.3 mags. Let's put those in since there's only two of those. And I think I'm going to go ahead and populate up all these mag resistors and solder them all in place. And then I think all we've got left is there's a 750K and a 220K. So let's see. And on this 3.3 mag, I got in at a 1% too. Because I feel like once you get into these mag resistors, I mean, 5% on a 3 mag resistor can be a pretty, a pretty good bit of resistance variation. And even at 1%, there's, there's a little variation between the two. But if you had a 5%, it might be a 3.380 or something and still be, you know, basically within spec. So that's a PF. There's our 3.3 mag. It goes right there. And the leads need to be tucked down pretty tight because these are a little larger resistor than those little one watt ones we did. Actually, these are one half watt because I needed them small enough to fit in this spot on the board. And again, these don't have any real, they don't have a lot of power going through them, so. One half watt was was just fine for this location in the board. Okay, there's those two. I'm gonna go ahead and solder those because the other resistor is like just right next to it, and these leads will get all tangled into each other make it hard to solder
And I will say that I've seen these same boards on eBay that are pre-assembled. And they only charge like $10 more for them to be pre-assembled. I would never do that. After seeing how widely out of range the components that came in this kit were, if they're soldering them together, I guarantee you they are not checking the values of these resistors. They're just, they got a whole pile of them and they're just soldering them in. So here are our two meg resistors. And these are again, uh, one half watt, one percent. And I'd have to go look at the schematic, but I think these are kind of tied in around the RIAA, RIAA network. It's kind of, well, it's hard to say that. It's a tongue twister. Two meg. That one's a little under two megs. Let's see what the rest of these are. So that one was two meg. That one's a little under. I think I want to ma match them up in pairs. If there is. Because that's a little over. If this one's a little under, then we'll have, we'll go with that. Yep, perfect. We'll put these two together, and we'll put these two together. So they're beeping at me. I hope the battery's not fixing to die on it. Well, it does have an auto shut off feature. But I'm not sure it really keeps track of from the last measurement or from just when you turned it on last. There's that one. And then there's another. This guy goes up here. Again, you're just going to hold it up. If you have some fingernails or I've seen people even like make a little plastic spacer or something to put under the resistor to make sure that it's spaced up when they bend the leads on the underside if you don't have any fingernails. Yeah, I'm not, not expecting these board soldering videos to get a lot of views. But if even, even if a few hundred people get something out of them, not killing anything to have the camera running while I'm while I'm doing this. And while it's, well, it is fun to listen, to be able to 
sit back and listen to some really nice sounding music after you're done. To me, these, this is just fun working with my hands, building stuff like this. And I hope you enjoy it too if you decide to do this. Okay, let's do this 750K because I saw that resistor here in this pile. Here's the 750K. And earlier I didn't see the 220K, but I'll look back through the bag. I might do that off camera between this and the next segment. Because we're, yeah, we're almost at 30 minutes again. So we're probably going to do this 750K resistor. And then call this, call this a wrap. And come back when I find that 220K. And if not, I can always solder it in later. But come back and. So I don't all the capacitors in. That should go pretty quickly. There's not nearly as many of them. And don't really, I don't feel the need to measure the, measure the capacitors that I'm installing. I'm not sure that the the meter that I have would really measure those small little picofarad caps accurately. And those big filtering caps, if they're they're plus or minus, I think twenty percent anyway, so the the absolute value of them isn't that critical. There we go. And we're coming right along. So I hope at least some of you are enjoying watching me assemble this and do you like my videos? Please subscribe. Please like the video. And we'll see you back here in a little bit to finish soldering these two resistors and then populate the capacitors on the board. And we'll have this all put together. Anyway, hope you have a nice day.